Not playing that, we wasn't for PNM, no. Together, together, becoming a stronger, writing confidence in a better management. One night, love, we must make it better. So, forcing each other, I hope you hear me. Developments are continuous. Ladies and gentlemen, our viewing and listening audiences on social media, mainstream media, our studio audience, and distinguished guests. Welcome to this evening's Women's Forum hosted by the People's National Movement. I am your moderator, Nadine Stewart Phillips, and I am pleased to take you through this evening's proceedings. I present to you our People's National Movement women, all possessing the hallmark of great leadership, women of class, strong women of satya, dignity, power, compassion, integrity, devoted, and most of all, service-oriented. And I start off by recognizing on set here with us this evening, the political leader of the PNM Tobago Council, whom we can all refer to as our leading lady on the island of Tobago in politics and leadership, and the candidate for the electoral district of Lambeau Signal Hill, Ms. Tracy Davidson Celestine. <laughs> Our specially invited guest this evening, the Member of Parliament for Arima and Minister of Housing and Urban Development, an attorney by profession and one who has been at the forefront of politics in Trinidad and Tobago for a number of years. I refer to her as a great mentor for young women of the PNM, having been the first female deputy speaker of the House of Representatives and the first female leader of the opposition bench in the Senate. Let's welcome Ms. Penelope Beckles Robinson. I recognize as well our own MP for Tobago East, in whom we are all well pleased and proud of her representation, Miss Ayana Webster Roy. And our two female candidates, ladies of excellence and ladies who have already placed their shoulders to the wheel and are ready to serve you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The candidate for the electoral district of Scarborough Calder Hall, Ms. Marceline Melville Jack. and none other than the candidate for the electoral district of Plymouth Golden Lane, Ms. Melissa James Guy. And so this evening we are going to have what I would refer to as a heart-to-heart -heart with our female leaders. The discussion and conversation promises to be educational, but indeed extremely inspiring. And so we would start off once, uh, one time this evening, this highly anticipated women's forum, and we would all agree, once the People's National Movement is hosting an event, everyone is interested, and we, and we know a number of young persons are tuned in and looking online. And so I had a point asked quite a common question, but one that is extremely What would be, sorry, this question would be personal to every <laughs> politics. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me say thank you very much and pleasant good night to each and everyone and even our own invited guests or member of parliament or candidates and those of you who are in the viewing audience. Um, a hearty good evening to all of you. Um, for me, life in politics is, of course, very demanding. Um, it takes quite a lot of your time, um, but at the end of the day, for me, it's a very gratifying experience because I'm in a position where I could influence policy, and with policy, I can influence change, change that will cause meaningful outcomes 
um, in terms of improving the lives of our people here in Tobago, and by extension, Trinidad and Tobago. So most of the times I don't study the demands on my time, but I pay close attention to how I can impact meaningful change on people's lives. Thank you, political leader, Ms. <laughs> Bethel Robinson. Yes, so let me also uh, say what a privilege and pleasure it is to participate in this forum, um, the People's National Movement, organizing a platform to give the women of the PNM the opportunity to speak. Um, this is the first time I'm getting the opportunity to congratulate um, the political leader of the People's National Movement, Tobago, um, Tracy Davidson, Celestine, uh, and to wish her the best and looking forward for her taking up the position as the Chief Secretary on the 25th of January. Um, I enjoy my politics. I enjoy participating in politics. I have been in politics for um, more than two decades. Uh, like Tracy said, you think sometime about the challenges, but you also think about the opportunities that comes your way as a result of giving, um, having that chance to be able to serve. Because politics is really about service. So over the years, I have always looked at a challenge as an opportunity. I had the great fortune this afternoon to work with Melissa uh, in her electoral dis district. Um, in a sense, some communities that we refer to as rural, um, but in, and it reminded me much of my community in Arima, and I know that Melissa will do an excellent job, and I see that a community like hers is really about opportunities, about serving, and about convincing people that you can do the best you can once you get the opportunity to serve. Excellent. And Melissa, when you get an endorsement from a woman of Tatia like Mrs. Beckles Robinson, know that you are on your way to excellent service. I want to move to our Member of Parliament as a mother and a wife. Can you describe for us what has your life in politics been? Thank you. Um, good evening to everyone, those who in, and it's a pleasure to be here among such distinguished ladies. It's a balancing act. Um, having to maintain your home, ensure the children are okay, but still be available and be able to respond to the needs of constituents. However, even though it's a balancing act, if you're enjoying, if you find it gratifying, if you find opportunities to challenge yourself, and also if you have the support, a strong support system, it will work. So I must say it's fulfilling, challenging but fulfilling. And it is made enjoyable because of the support system, not only personal support system, but the extended family, the constituents, the party support system, as well as my colleagues in the party who help to empower you know, us younger women who would help to show us where we're going wrong, who would help to show us where we're doing good and praise us when we're doing good, but also who are respectful enough and honest enough to show us where we may need to improve and impart their knowledge. Great, thank you. So a common response that we have heard this evening is support. That family support is critical as a female in politics, as a woman in politics and in leadership. I just want to jump back to Minister Beckles Robinson. What would be your advice to young women that are aspiring to take up leadership roles in politics, or women who are interested in getting involved in active politics? Well, maybe I should start where Ayana left off, which is the, um, the issue of support. It is so important to have um, the support of your, of your family and your friends. For me, the most important thing is not to be distracted. Now, you would find that when you talk to a lot of young people, especially young women, about getting involved in politics, many of them would say they are not interested. And because of the fear of this smear campaign 
and the possibility of people wanting to get involved in your personal life, and even recognizing that very often, um, because politics is so competitive, that people actually will tell untruths about you. And I think that is the part that is most, um, could be most distressing. But if you get involved in politics, you understand that the possibility that there would be those who would be um, dishonest, there would be those who will try to distract you and try to say untrue things about you. If you want to serve, um, if you want to do something for your community, keep focused and know at the end of the day that there will always be persons who appreciate the fact that you are going to improve the lives of your community. So ignore the detractors, focus if politics is your passion, if service is your passion, because you will have a number of people truly recognizing the work you do, encouraging you, and at the end of the day, you will be fulfilled, and you will feel fulfilled. Thank you very much. And as you speak about passion and purpose, I want to move to Melissa James Guy. I know she has as a tagline, pursuing passion, pursuing purpose. Melissa is actually our youngest uh, candidate on the slate of 12 and also the youngest panelist this evening. And so Melissa, as a young woman, what advice would you give to other young ladies like yourself or younger that want to get involved in active politics or leadership roles in politics? Good evening, everyone. So what I would advise other young women, as I myself am getting my feet wet and walking and meeting people within this community, I like to refer to Tobago as one community. But the advice that I would give to any young woman who really feels as though this is her calling and she feels passionate about serving others, that just as Minister Beckles would have advised to remain focused, get up, go out there, work hard, and get it. Because as she would have also expressed in politics, you would hear so many things about yourself, things that you didn't even know about yourself. But one thing for sure I know is that only the strong survive. Mm -hmm. And I know, <laughs> I know in Tobago we have many strong women, just as my fellow panelists, and I assure you, that once your heart is in it, you will survive, you will be fulfilled. The Tobago electorate can sift through the noise and pick out the genuine. So as long as you are genuinely interested in serving your community of Tobago, do not allow anyone to detract or to distract you. Get up and get it. If not you, Thank you, Melissa. Very sound advice coming from our youngest candidate, Miss Melissa James Guy. I'm going to ask as well the candidate for Scarborough Calder Hall, Miss Marceline Melville Jack, to please, what would be your advice to young persons? Well, women in particular, young women. Young women, yes. sorry. Okay, good evening, everyone. To those young aspirants who wish to get into politics, my first advice would be ensure that you are in it for the right reasons. This is about service to community. And service, many times, will take a toll on you. Many times as a politician, you will be called on at any time of day or night. So it is important that you ensure that you are spiritually equipped to deal with the challenges that you will face. I will also advise that you do not just see yourself as someone who is intellectual and who has the capacity to make policy 
and to make decisions that will affect others. Not just your head should be involved, but your heart. You need to be someone who is compassionate because you will meet so many situations that require you to have a heart. So my advice, if this is your calling, ensure that you are spiritually sound, ensure that you stay focused, and that you have a support system. It does not have to be family member or mate, but ensure that you have a team, because a life in politics is one of collaboration, and teamwork and support is vital. So I'll invite Melissa again, who just wants to add If I can aspect. be permitted to add as well, one of the secrets that I have used to propel me through this journey is to find sound mentorship. Because a lot of times we lean on our own understanding. Mm -hmm. But I have been fortunate in the People's National Movement to be mentored by the likes of my now political leader, Mrs. Tracy Davidson Celestine, Mrs. Penny Beckles, Ayada Webster Roy, Shamfa Kajo, Camille Robinson Regis, fellow past teacher, Miss Marcelin Melville Jack. Find sound mentorship to help to prune you into the blooming plant that you can become, and you're well on your way. Thank you. Show. I also want to suggest that politics, um, you should look at it as a profession. Mm -hmm. If you decide that you want to get involved in politics, ensure that you educate yourself politically. And by that I mean know the pieces of legislation, um, get involved in courses, whether it be leadership, whether it be local government, but any particular course that can help you to be better, to be a better politician, to serve your constituents better, that is important because too often we decide that we want to get involved in a profession and we don't understand that it's a work in progress. So not because you become a candidate, um, it means that that is the end of your political involvement. That is when you actually start um, to ensure that you prepare yourself to the extent that you are ready to serve and deliver, particularly having regard to the expectations of your electoral district and your constituents. Thank you. And if I could just add, there is a famous quote that I love by Isaac Newton, and it says, if I have seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. And this People's National Movement Organization has paved the way, the woman of this PNM has paved the way for all the young women, all the young aspiring ladies, and Melissa made the point about finding a mentor, finding a woman in the PNM that you can rely on for support, that you can rely on for advice. And I can assure you that leadership, mentorship, and sound advice, you can definitely find it in women of the People's National Movement. And as we continue with our questions, I just want to go back to the political leader. Sometimes as women, we, not, we may not always realize how poised we are for success and leadership roles, although our potential and the abilities, it's always there as women, of course. So my question to you, Mrs. Celestine, how would you describe your career in politics over the years and what are some of your successes that you would like to share with the audience this evening? Well, thank you very much for that question. To describe my career in politics, let me say that it has been a reasonably long one in the context of Tobago politics. I come now with 15, 16 years of experience in politics. 
And as I said, when I started off, for me, it's a very, very fulfilling experience. As a matter of fact, I love politics. My family, don't, they don't understand how come um, Tracy likes politics. But I guess it's because of how I grew up um, at our home we were always, we had a very open door approach. People were always coming in. People were always going out. Um, people were always coming for some kind of assistance at our home. And I was always involved in community service, in the youth group, in the village council movement, that kind of thing. And so getting involved in politics wasn't really a difficulty for me. And since I have been serving at this level, starting off at the very young age of 26 and taking up the very important portfolio of as Assistant Secretary in the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, I have really been committed to the task of ensuring that I can contribute to the development of Tobago. And so for me, it is a very fulfilling journey there are times when your emotions can go up and down in one day because sometimes you feel joy, sometimes you feel anger, sometimes you feel quite a number of different things. But at the end of the day, I just want to say that this is a career path that I have chosen. I could have become all sorts of things because I could have worked at one of the accounting firms in Trinidad and Tobago where I'd gotten a scholarship. I could have still been a teacher because I also taught uh, Bishop's High School and St. Joseph's Convent, etc. But for some reason or the other, politics have given me the kind of fulfillment um, and, and, and sense of purpose that I've been looking for. And if I'm to describe my journey in one word, I would say very ful fulfilling, despite the challenges that I've faced as would have been articulated by my colleague here, um, Ms. Penny, as well as others, in terms of how um, the perception of people when you get um, to this level. Um, in terms of my successes, I would not look at my own personal achievement, but I would focus on how my work, my sense of purpose, has helped to develop communities, have helped to develop women um, in our society uh, has helped to um, impact our men out there um, in the communities and my leading the construction of community centers in uh, the division of community development and culture, being able to contribute to driving tourism forward so that it can generate revenue and employment um, for people. And of course, now being in the Division of Health, Wellness, and Family Development, and working with all the staff there to ensure that our people are very safe and alive now are some of my greatest achievements at this point in time. Thank you very much. I want to go back to the Member of Parliament for Tobago East and ask if you can also share with us your successes in politics over the last years and also your involvement, how it has impacted you. Okay, so I like to describe myself as an accidental politician. <laughs> um, by nature, I'm not upfront, I'm very um, shy. But when it comes to justice, when it comes to wanting what is best and what is right, I become a, a sort of a tough lioness. And I will share an example. <laughs> When I was um, younger, I think I was about 13, 14, we had a conference at church, and the priest said something that disturbed me, <laughs> and I got up, young teenager, and I, I made my point. I was very forceful in making my point, and then I left the church and I went back home. <laughs> so I'm the person, I, even though I'm reserved, I would stand up for something I believe in. Um, what I must say is that even though um, I became actively involved in politics in 2015. I've always believed in the philosophy of the People's National Movement. And I come from a family that we uphold the philosophy of the People's National Movement. So when somebody told me that, well, you know, this is happening in the House of Representatives, when I started arguing, well, how they could make that happen? And he said to me, well, you weren't there to lend your voice. And I said, you know what, I'm going to stand up. And 
not standing up for me, but to me, standing up for everybody who wanted to have that voice and didn't have the opportunity to. Um, what I count as some of my greatest success would be the impact and the changes in the lives of the people of Tobago East. I am extremely proud of what we have been able to accomplish as a constituency. I am proud of the fact... <laughs> and I get very passionate and emotional when I'm talking about Tobago <laughs> East because I still live in my constituency. I'm proud of the fact that in Tobago East, we would have been able to rally our resources. We would have been able to advocate collectively to bring about the development that we wanted to see. And today, for example, when we open up the Kiantec Customer Service Center, and as I said to my husband, it's the first time in years I'm actually paying a bill. I felt proud that, you know, that our parents, the elderly in Tobago East, would not have to journey to Scarborough. And I said, you know what, Ayana? I said, you know what, Ayana, this little country girl, we're doing good. And the People's National Movement doing good for Tobago East. <laughs> I felt extremely happy to be. Um, just like Mr. Celestine would have said, there are times when you will have high emotions, you'll be happy at some days, you'll be sad some days, but at the end of it all is recognizing what you're doing for people. So the mother who would reach out to me and say, I had nothing to eat, but you turned up, that makes me feel fulfilled. For the child that would message me and said, you helped me, and I got an A, that makes me feel fulfilled. But most importantly, that I'm setting an example for my niece, my nephews, and my children, that regardless of your personality, regardless of what you may think about yourself, that once you step out of your comfort zone, you can make a meaningful impact in your society and in your country. Thank you very much. And one thing I love about the responses from both our political leader and the member of parliament, the successes that they outlined had to do with their service to the community, nothing personal, nothing about personal achievements, personal accomplishments, but their successes had to do with their impact on people, their impact on communities, and it says something about PNM women, we always put service before self. And that is very remarkable and it's very outstanding. And I, of course, want to go to uh, Melissa James Guy as well. What would you say? I know that you always boast about joining the People's National Movement at the age of nine years old. And I know you have been very active, very articulate. Um, over the years in the People's National Movement. So what would you say have been some of your successes as a young person in this organization? Let me, let me set the record straight. I have been a PNM since I was about four years old. <laughs> <laughs> because in my household, my grandfather, Felix Alexis, he used to ensure when it's seven o'clock, no nonsense, news time. Yes. And I used to enjoy looking at the likes of Penny Beckles and Mr. Manning at the time. And, you know, long time, I am a p and It's only when I'm old enough now to really participate that I formalized it. But in the People's National Movement, I was always inspired and encouraged to do better for myself. I began at the age of 13 with any real responsibility in the party. Um, there was an election and my neighbor asked me to assist her with some canvassing. So I really got an opportunity to learn the groundwork, learn how to interact with the people and to truly understand what politics is about even at the lowest level. And from there, as I said, seeing the likes of some of the women and the other leaders, male included, who would have gone before some of them are still here with us, that truly inspired me to really become the best version of myself. My tagline, as you say, is pursuing passion, pursuing purpose. It has always been a passion of mine. As I said, at four, I'm looking at the television and I could tell you everything that went on on the news between um, the parliamentarians. 
and given opportunities by the People's National Movement, of course, with the universal education, I would have taken full advantage of those and then always being encouraged by even people like Auntie Cecile, come on, Melissa, one step further, do something else, go and do this. What you're doing now, you finish this, move on to the next thing. You're going to do the doctorate now. So in the People's National Movement, where I've served at many levels, my most fulfilling one being chairman of the, women's, the Tobago West Women's League, where I even got a further opportunity to interact with the women of the People's National Movement on a different level. It truly did empower me and inspire me to really put my shoulder to the wheel and in a meaningful way develop myself so that I can now impart on others and now be a candidate in the election soon to be the representative of Plymouth <laughs> Golden Lane, <laughs> where I would now take my experiences and take my qualifications and all that I have garnered over the years on the People's National Movement stewardship, I would put it to play there. Thank you, Melissa. And me Melissa again used another important word, inspire, because in the People's National Movement, as women, we inspire each other, we push each other to our greatest limits. We complement each other. We do not compete with each other. Yes, and I thank you, Melissa, for that. And so I move to Mrs. Jack as well. I would also like to get your input on your career in politics and also what successes would you like to share with us this evening? Well, I love the idea that you said career in <laughs> politics because like Ayana said, I never really saw myself as a politician. So I think I fell into politics as well. But for many years, I've always been an ardent supporter of this great party because when I see p &M people, I see joy. We are always happy and smiling, and it's always about positivity. And I believe that um, the world really needs optimism and success. And these two words are synonymous with p &M. So at the end of my career, I was dropped into politics. And I must say that I have never felt more complete, because I believe that I was being prepared. As an educator, I was being prepared for the life that I am now enjoying. And I want you to understand that I am actually enjoying being a politician, because it gives me an opportunity to continue the work that I've done all my life at a different level, and that is empowering minds, helping the, the people in the community to understand that they have all they need within themselves to make themselves better. So one of my greatest successes in politics had to be the fact that I was made Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, because that division is all about empowerment. And because I was able to build relationships and partnerships, it caused the thrust of empowerment to be even greater. So to the hundreds of Tobigonians that have been empowered in the last four years, because that's the term of my office so far, I want to thank you for believing in yourself. That is what the PNM causes people to do. Believe that you can become all that you want to be. So that's one of my major, major successes to date in the PNM. Thank you. I would ask, of course, Mrs. Beckles Williams to weigh in as well your successes, your greatest successes in the People's National Movement and also your career in politics. So when I think about um, the word success, the first thing I think about is the PNM's policy on education. 
um, because I strongly believe that had it not been for that policy, I wouldn't be here today. Um, the benefits of going to school, I mean, um, secondary, tertiary, um, that allowed me to become a lawyer. And throughout that period, it would have been a policy that basically spoke to free education. So I think I want to pay tribute because very often we don't pay tribute um, to our leaders, you know, starting, of course, from Eric Williams, who always believed in free education and continuing, of course, to our present uh, political leader and prime minister, the Honorable Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, who has continued his love um, for education and ensuring that the PNM's policy on education allows so much of us to be what we are today. So for me, that is where I would start in terms of success. Um, I have been in politics now for almost three decades. Okay, so don't think about what my age is, you know. Um, so I started off in local government and became an opposition senator, opposition MP, um, minister, and, and then ambassador like, um, like Tracy. Um, and the opportunities given to me by the People's National Movement to serve at those levels then for me translated into what I was able to do for the community that I represented for so many years. So um, like Marston said, when you serve in um, whether it be tourism, environment, um, public utilities, and now in housing, the government's policy allows you then not just for your constituency, but of course the entire Trinidad and Tobago. And those, um, those ministries are ministries where you have to deliver for the people. So I would focus um, and of course thank um, both um, Mr. Manning and Dr. Rowley who appointed me to those, those various ministries that would have allowed me to ensure that my constituents benefited in some way. And by extension, gave me the opportunity to develop my political career um, as well as my legal career. And like everyone else has said here tonight, I thoroughly enjoy my politics. <laughs> Thank you. So again, to our listening audience, service before self, as all our beautiful women of the PNM articulated this evening, one of the major tenets of the people's national movement. And so the time has passed by so quickly. This brings us to the end, ladies, of our very first segment. You would not believe that we have already gone past 45 minutes since we've been here. It seems like just five minutes. And so we are going to take just a short break. We are going to invite to the stage to do some entertainment for us another young woman in Tobago, powerful in the arts, powerful in the field of performance. I would invite Adana to do a performance for us this evening. Good evening, ladies. Good evening to the panel as well. And of course, it's a pleasure, it's always a pleasure <coughs> to grace the stage, and especially tonight at the Women's Forum of the People's National Movement. And I just want to do something for all you beautiful ladies here tonight.
and for those, again, who are now joining us online on TPT, this is the CNN 2021 Women's Forum, and we have our panelists this evening that are responding to questions. And so before we move to the very heavy stuff, there is one more question that I have uh, for you ladies, specifically for Mrs. Beckles Robinson and the political leader. Now I'm aware probably about four months after the inception of the PNM in 1956, Dr. Eric Williams created the Women's League. And so my question is, how has the roles changed for women in the PNM over the years? Or has there been any change in the roles for women in the People's National Movement over the years? And you know, you, you spoke a little while ago about um, some of the mentors and those whose, whose shoulders, um, you know, we can say we have really rested on um, and how we have benefited. So we talked today about people like Norma Lewis Phillip, um, June Newell Williams, Marilyn Gordon, um, Cynthia Alfred, and very often when people talk about the PNM, you talk and you talk about the Women's League. This concept of the kitchen cabinet, um, you know, has been discussed. But if you go back even to the way starting from Isabel Tiche coming now to where we are, you have always seen that the PNM, the PNM's leadership has always had faith in the women. Um, and I think if we think about what our present prime minister has done, I mean, you have the president of the Senate is female, you have the, um, the leader of, of government business, um, Camille robinson Regis, um, and then the first elected female president of Trinidad and Tobago has been under this leadership, um, Dr. Raleigh, the People's National Movement. So you have always seen where women have been given opportunities. I mean, the creation specifically of the Women's League so you do have the lady vice chairman of the party, um, and you, you, every constituency as well has a women's league. So it means that the opportunities have always been there for women to go. Um, and so therefore, we, we must look at what has happened in Tobago. I mean, Tobago, you have two women for the first time in Tobago West and Tobago East, and Tobago will have the distinction, Tobago making history, where for the first time you're going to have a female chief secretary. Um, um, and all of those opportunities, so I mean, I would say in a sense that, well, Trinidad would be learning a lot from, <laughs> from Tobago um, and the strength and the decisions that they have taken to give to, to women in Tobago the prominence that that you would see, um, not just um, with your Tobago West and your Tobago um, East MP, but your, your political leader. Um, and of course, the distinction of having um, your female candidates. So for me, I say that um, I continue to say great is the PNM, and of course, great is the Women's League yes. that have done a <laughs> tremendous job um, over the years. And so, political leader, you created history, becoming the first female political leader on the island of Tobago. <laughs> and of course, come January 25th, you will be the first female chief secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. What would you say, how has the PNM, the People's National Movement, contributed to your development or your movement from one stage to another in this political sphere? Well, to answer that question, when I look at the People's National Movement, I look at, I see a party that is, or a movement rather, that is well organized one that has structures, one that has systems, policies, and all of it is documented. And so when you become part of the organization, 
you are now placed in a position where you must follow a particular approach to moving forward within the people's national movement. Going back to the question that you had about the roles of women and how it has changed within the PNM over the last 65 years or so, one of the things I've observed is that women have moved from providing support to the men in politics or to the party in general or to the movement in general to becoming very involved in decision making. And so within the level of the cabinet in Trinidad and even within the level of the executive council of the People's National Movement, you have women holding positions. But more than that, over the years, the People's National Movement, apart from creating the Women's League to give women a voice, a say in the decision-making process in Trinidad and also in Tobago, we also amended the Constitution to include a lady vice chairman, a position which I held and also it is now held by, I think it was also held by the MP and also now by uh, Ms. Marceline Melville-Jack. But more than that, the PNM has progressed as a party to becoming more embracing of women, taking up very high levels in the organization. And as Ms. Beckles pointed out, we now have moved to a situation where we have two female members of parliament representing one Tobago East and also Tobago West, and one where we have progressed to allowing women and giving women an opportunity to lead the political party here in Tobago as well. And so for me, the People's National Movement, I would say, and let me say thanks to all the women who have um, uh, provided service to the PNM over the years and those who have contributed to the development and advancement of women and Tobago going forward. And Miss Penny um, highlighted some of them, like Miss Cynthia Alfred, Miss Claudia Broom Duke, uh, to name a few. I really want to pay uh, tribute to all of them for the contributions that they have made. And them be being involved in politics, they would have also mentored me in one way or the other. And for today, I am now a person who has the historical understandings of the people's national movement, and I would have learned from them, pulled their strength and their experiences in terms of um, making and leading a meaningful life as a PNM woman in Tobago. Thank you very much. <laughs> Political leader, just one <laughs> final question for you, and I'm sure you would love this question. Tell us your secret. <laughs> Tell us your secret to political success or political advancement. What did it take? What does it take? Well, you know, for me, it's liking what you do. And as I said before, I have a passion for politics, a passion for working with people, for helping people. And there is a saying, I, I can't remember how it, but I'm going to summarize it, which says that if you like what you do, half of the work is done. And so for me, doing this job, it is something that I really love. It is very fulfilling for me. And working with people, as I said, is really not um, any significant challenge for me at this point in time. And so the secret is ensuring that you like what you do, and half of the story is done. Very well. So to all the young women that are listening, as much as you may see, you may always see a PNM woman well-dressed, and a PNM woman always classy. It's not about image, it is about passion. You must have that passion for service for people if you are desirous of becoming a politician or being involved in politics. You heard it from all our leaders seated here this evening. And so 
we, I just want to change the conversation slightly. Now, in recent times, we have seen a lot of female victims of violence in Trinidad and Tobago. I think we had about 46 deaths, 46 deaths sorry, in 2020, with a little over 50% coming directly from domestic violence. And of course, in the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen a rapid increase in the number of cases over the last few months and might I say weeks. Now, the political leader, I must say, has been a champion for the cause at the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development, of which I am the Assistant Secretary. And of course, Minister Webster Roy and the government of Trinidad and Tobago, they have expended a lot of resources to address some of the needs of women who become victims of violence. Now, we have pledged to open more homes to victims of domestic violence as well from the division political leader and offer more financial and business assistance to these women so that they can become empowered and so on and lead independent lives. Now, I would like to hear from all of you uh, this evening, women. How do you think we can effectively address this issue of domestic violence? And I know the responses may differ, and there is no right or wrong answer, but it's a discussion. How do you think we can all effectively address? And might I just add that this is not only the role of the government. Mm -hmm. So we can look at it from personal, we can look at it from the role that the family plays, the role that the church plays, the role that NGOs and other civil organizations play. Yes, so we, we don't only need to look at it from the role of the government, but how can we effectively address this issue of domestic violence? And I would take the opportunity to start off with Minister Webster Roy. For the opportunity. Um, I want to take it from policy level first, and then I want to take it from a personal level and in terms of the home. Um, in terms of the policy level, we recognize the need for us to have continuous public education and sensitization. Because what we recognize is if you're only spreading the message that violence in any form is wrong only at certain times of the year, then people tend to forget. But a sustained messaging, a sustained program educating the public about the violence in all its form, not just intimate partner violence, would go a long way towards helping to change mindset. Outside of changing mindset is putting framework in place to ensure that those who violate people, those who violate laws, are indeed held accountable. I was happy that I'm part of the team, part of the government that would have, after years of women clamoring, we, have, we had a female prime minister, it wasn't done. It's under this administration, under Dr. the Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, under our administration, our PNM administration, that steps were taken to amend the Domestic Violence Act to ensure greater protection and measures for women who are mainly the victims. We also um, widen various definitions to provide greater support and protection for persons within household. So we now cater for children, the elderly, etc. But I often say outside of policy, outside of, outside of building shelters, what we do within our homes, that is what matters, how we educate, how we socialize our children. And I want to share an example. On many occasions, we would tell our sons, don't hit girls. But why aren't we telling our children it is not right to hit, period? I remember um, there someone shared a post that said, um, we must tell our daughters it is better to return home at the first sign of violence than to return in a box. And I changed the quote to say, we must tell our sons and our daughters it is better to return home, that there's a space for them at home instead of staying in an abusive relationship. We have to educate our children the same way. They have to carry the same conversation. Because if we are telling our boys, okay, it is okay for you, if we are telling our girls, it is okay for you to lash out. 
and we are telling our sons that you must not out, then we're not carrying the same message. At the end of the day, we have to ensure that we promote non-violence within our homes. And that is why, for me, I'm excited by the fact that our government would have agreed to accept the opportunity to collaborate with the United Nations as well as the EU to launch a Spotlight initiative. What Spotlight does, it places a focus on family violence and helping us to address the issues of family violence, firstly within the home, within the community, and also strengthen it at the policy level. There is a role for each and every one of us to end violence in all its forms. There's a role for the church, because there are some churches that are saying to women and saying to men, um, the Bible says to subject yourself, but Jesus said make no fool. Jesus didn't tell you to be a fool. You know, there are some communities that, say, that would be saying to people, it is okay because I remember a young lady said to me in a, um, a workshop, well, I grew up here and if he had hit me, he had loved me. That's not the right philosophy, philosophy for us to share with our children. So we have to change the conversation. And in changing the conversation, we have to start changing mindsets towards violence. And it starts within the home as well as within our schools. Thank you very much, Minister. <clears throat> Political leader and Secretary of Health, Wellness, and Family Development. Well, I, I really would want to concur with the expressions from the Member of Parliament for Tobago East and the person who also leads the ministry in terms of treating with um, gender-based violence, etc. Now, in the Tobago context, um, based on the reports I've received from the Division of Health, Wellness, and Family Development and also from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Um, within the year 2020 alone, there were over 230 cases of gender-based violence registered. And it's my, in my mind, it's one too many. And we have seen what has happened in Trinidad and Tobago, where we had over 46 persons who were assaulted and attacked in a number of different ways. And, you know, it is not always we can't legislate everything as a government or as a Tobago House of Assembly. And so if we have to tackle that issue of gender-based violence, as the, my colleague said, a member of parliament for Tobago East, it really has to start from the home. And we also have to go back to the Bible, which speaks about training your child in the way that you want that child to grow. And very early, as parents, you all should be able to look to see whether your children have anger management issues and be able to work with the NGOs, work with the Tobago House of Assembly, work with the governing body in an effort to treat with anger management issues within the home. And that is how we would be able to stem the gender-based violence that we have in our communities and throughout Trinidad and Tobago today. Because the government of Trinidad and Tobago and the Tobago House of Assembly as PNM administrations, we have basically done all that we could do. We have created laws, we have created policies, we have set aside facilities, we have counselors within the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development, and I'm sure in the ministries in Trinidad as well. But we can only do so much. And so I'm calling on all of the parents I'm calling on all of the men. I'm calling on the people in the communities. You know, there was a time when we said that it takes a community to raise a child. We need to go back to those traditions and we need to go back to those values. If it is that we are to effect any meaningful changes when it comes to gender-based violence and even crime in our society today. Thank you. And I would just ask Mrs. Jack, as a former teacher and principal, if you can give us that uh, perspective from the school setting. Okay. All right, before I get to the school, I just want to add that most of the persons who eventually become abusers have learned abuse from the home. So at times, the only help that they can get is at school when they leave the home. So although we know it's ideal, the ideal 
position is that it be taught at home where it should start. By the time the child gets to the school, they must be in a safe place where they are taught self-esteem, respect for each other, and love, basic love. And it comes through modeling. We have to start modeling the behavior, helping young men and women to understand that love is about respect. It is not about treating someone as an object because the reason why there is abuse is because someone believes that this person is their property, okay? So it is the modeling of true love, counseling session if it's necessary, but self-esteem, helping young women and young men to value themselves. That, to me, is going to be one of the basic ways in which we can help to, you know, to get this problem lessened as much as possible. So I think that the school has a big role to play. We have guidance counselors set up in schools, and I can tell you the many horror stories that the children bring to school. And it's only when they get to school that they are able to experience the kind of love, respect, and attention that they need that they are not getting at home. So I really believe the school and the church needs to play a bigger role. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So as, as we have heard, the role of the family is important. The role of the school is important. The role of the church is important because it doesn't matter how much we legislate or how many policies we effect, it still becomes a personal responsibility and it still becomes the responsibility of the family again. And Mrs. Jack made a very good point. It starts at home, it starts in the family and then in the schools, sometimes you also recognize or the, the knowledge you, you find out as a matter of fact, in the school setting, because it happens in home, at the home, and then the student goes to confide in the teacher or goes to confide in the principal. And so what we are all saying this evening is that we all have a role to play. The responsibility belongs to each and every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. All right? Um, there is one question, I just want to move on because I know that the time is running very fast. I'm not too sure why. Um, but there is one question that I would like to get a response from all our panelists. Now it is said that whenever women take up leadership positions, there is more coordination, there is more teamwork, and there is more empowerment. And men, we are not bashing you, but that is what is said. But what is interesting is that as we held the discussion this, this evening, almost every panelist mentioned the word empowerment in one sentence or the other. And so my question to all of you, and I would start off with Melissa James Guy, what does empowerment look like to you? Or what does empowerment mean to you? And how can you, as a female leader, contribute to empowering others? So, empowerment to me, it looks like regardless of your socioeconomic status, being able to build yourself and to become the best version of yourself through the collaboration and the support of other persons pouring into the lives of the person who is being empowered. And I want to say that not only persons who are socially displaced or disadvantaged in the society need to be empowered. Just as Minister Ayanna Webster Roy would have stated, sometimes you might have that type of support, but you just really might be in your comfort zone. But just being able to see somebody who might have 
been in the same circumstance or in the same frame of mind that you were in at once, just being able to see that person really live up to their truest potential by stepping out of their comfort zone empowers others. You don't have to directly do it. Sometimes it is done indirectly. Empowerment means taking the right resources. And when we say right resources, it doesn't necessarily have to be tangible resources. Sometimes it's just a listening ear and sound advice to people at the right point in time. So that to me is what empowerment looks like. Regardless of your socioeconomic status, being able to hear the right things, get the right support that you need at the right time. Thank you very much, Melissa. And I would go to Mrs. Beckles Robinson. Empowerment, yeah. what does sure. it look like to you? And how can you contribute to empowering mm -hmm. others? So when I think about empowerment, I think about opportunities. Um, you know, you really, as a politician, whenever your term of office is completed, you, you look at some of the, the persons within your district um, who you know they are in a situation where they simply believe that they cannot get out of that situation. Um, and as you, as you walk your areas, you will meet people from time to time who have literally given up, whether because of domestic violence, whether because of education, whether because of financial situations. Um, and you, you, as, you, as a politician, you really want to find a way where you can assist those people. You can even convince them that it is possible to come out, whether it be out of poverty, to remove yourself out of domestic violence, um, persons who want to be educated, um, and it's really about sharing some of the opportunities that you have had. It's about networking, um, it's about sharing experiences so that people believe, not just that they have the opportunity, but that they also can get to the stage where they have the will right. to be able to move to another level. Um, and if you can create an environment so that, that so you move from that feeling of hopelessness to a feeling of opportunity, to a feeling of victory, to a feeling of satisfaction. Um, so at the end of the day, they may not necessarily succeed at what they want, but they actually are willing to take a step. Because very often empowerment can really be, or is just simply baby steps, which allows people to feel that I can get to the finish line. Thank you. Political leader. Well, empowerment for me is about allowing or enabling persons to lead meaningful lives. And I'm going to answer the question from the perspective of the party, from the perspective of the People's National Movement, because that is what the People's National Movement has been doing in the context of Tobago, and I'm sure Ms. Penny would talk from the context of Trinidad and Tobago. And there are certain programs and initiatives that must be implemented if it is that we are fulfilling the objective, the mandate of empowering our citizens. And in this particular instance, we are talking about women. And when I look at the work that the Tobago House of Assembly through the PNM administration has been doing for women, I see several uh, initiatives standing out. One, ensuring that our women are a part of the decision-making processes in Tobago. And we have been working with NGOs um, from the perspective of the Tobago House of Assembly. Um, we have women sitting in executive council and even in all our stakeholder interactions, we have seen that women have been sitting around the table and making decisions. Another aspect of empowerment has to do with helping them to bring out that entrepreneurial spirit that is within them. And even in the Division of Health, Wellness, and Family Development, we have programs such as the REACH program geared towards helping women to achieve their fullest potential. 
and of course from the Division of Community Development and Culture. And then through mentoring, we can ensure, through mentoring and even through our training programs, we can ensure that our women are empowered as well. And from the Division of Youth and Sport, from the Division of um, Health, Wellness and Family Development, from the Division of Community Development and Culture, we have a myriad of programs that are geared towards ensuring that our young women can be mentored and trained in a particular way. So from that perspective, um, the PNM administration, the Tobago House of Assembly, has been doing quite a lot in terms of churning out programs so that our young women and our not so young women, so that our single mothers can be empowered to lead meaningful lives in Tobago and by extension Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. So I would move to ask Mrs. Jack to Wayne, and then I would finally move to Minister Webster. Okay. Empowerment to me is about creating opportunities which will help individuals to believe that they can step out and become all that they can be. Because empowerment is about movement. And many times, people believe that they are unable you know, so when you empower them, you, you build up this belief that, hey, you can do it. So it's much more than giving a grant. Because if you have a, a great idea and you believe in yourself in, and in your ability to make this happen, that to me is empowerment. It's also about modeling. Because many times people would look at, let's say, Melissa, who is going to succeed at this election. And knowing where Melissa came from, they will say, if she can do it, I can. So empowerment is much more than we, we can even imagine. Sometimes the very, your very appearance empowers somebody else. You know, the things you say, the things you do. So it's just about causing people to believe that they can step out and achieve. Thank you. <laughs> Minister Webster-Roy. And I fully agree with all my <laughs> colleagues. It's about, as policymakers, as leaders, as mentors, it's about creating that environment, creating the opportunities. However, I strongly believe that the sense of Empowerment, being empowered is a personal. Well, this brings us to the end of the program for today, guys. Remember to make a difference today now. And uh, I have a new one for you. Don't make them mask. Wear your mask. Don't make them ask. Wear your mask. This is my daddy. He says it's good to look out for others and share with them. But we don't share germs. Germs are bad. Since COVID-19 came, things have changed. But we still find ways to look out for others. Like sharing our Wi-Fi with Jack so he can do his school. Jack's family wasn't always this happy. Back when everyone first had to stay home, they would always argue and do things that hurt each other. 
So Daddy called old Mama June from over the road and Boise from the parlor. Together, they all helped Jack's family get along better. Mama Joan even got her nephew from the community police to come and help. I guess you can't say my dad's a hero, but he says anyone can do what he did. We just have to look out for others too. Together, let's ensure home is a safe environment for learning, laughter, and love. Call 996, 999, or 800 SAVE for help or to report abuse. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Development's government-aided self-help housing project, a new way to affordable housing, designed with you in mind. I would like to join everyone here in congratulating you and wishing you well as you and your families step onto the first round of the home ownership ladder. This program, which forms part of our public housing program, is true of our mandate as, and is in keeping with the, the country's national development goals of eradicating poverty through the empowerment of citizens, particularly low to middle income families, so they can capitalize on opportunities to access quality, affordable housing solutions. Chief Executive Officer of the Land Settlement Agency, Mr. Haza Hossein, described this as a proud, momentous occasion. We are witnessing another step in the government's initiative which will provide housing for deserving citizens. To the beneficiaries, you are receiving these lots at a highly subsidized price as our government continues to support innovative housing solutions. These are lots that have all the statutory approvals, Town and Country, WASA, Drainage Department, Director of Service, and the Regional Corporation. In delivering the feature address, the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, the Honorable Penelope Beckles, expressed pleasure in distributing the deeds and land leases. The provision of affordable, well-designed housing solutions has always been a priority of this administration. This government understands the critical role the state has to play in the local housing sector to ensure eligible citizens within the low to middle income groups have an opportunity to build tangible wealth assets through home ownership. You now have the opportunity to construct your own home and to meet your family's needs. Home ownership is serious business but it will also bring you many rewarding experiences in the years to come. A couple of the beneficiaries shared their gratitude for the support of government over the duration of their project. It's really a, a very happy occasion, right? something we're looking forward for a long time. Right? It has been a long process, but the, the Land Settlement Agency really has been helping us along the way and we appreciate, I appreciate it a lot. To the Ministry of Housing Development and the LSA and they, they were a lot of help. Thank you very much for this opportunity. This was a production of the Office of the Prime Minister, Information Division. Market boxes were distributed to thousands of students on the school feeding program to ensure their continued nutritional needs are provided for. Tourism Trinidad Limited launched their website, which will now provide stakeholders in tourism with a platform to promote their destinations to potential visitors. The Ministry of Sport and Community Development hosted a craft market at Woodford Square for artisans who benefited from the Ministry's training programs. They now have the opportunity to convert their training into financial growth. Residents of Goodwood, Tobago witnessed the sod turning for the much-awaited Grandy Gully Bridge, which will provide connection to the rest of the community. This was a production of the Office of the Prime Minister, Communications. This is my daddy. He says it's good to look out for others and share with them. But we don't share germs. Germs are bad. Since COVID-19 came, things have changed. But we still find ways to look out for others. 
like sharing our Wi-Fi with Jack so he can do his school. Jack's family wasn't always this happy. Back when everyone first had to stay home, they would always argue and do things that hurt each other. So Daddy called old Mama June from over the road and Boise from the parlor. Together, they all helped Jack's family get along better. Mama June even got her nephew from the community police to come and help. I guess you can say my dad's a hero, but he says anyone can do what he did. We just have to look out for others too. Together, let's ensure home is a safe environment for learning, laughter, and love. Call 996, 999, or 800 SAVE for help or to report abuse. They're back. Listen guys, you had a number one morning show for six years, but being number one is hard work, man. Let's go! No. Revolution. Crossfit. Down. Ah. Come on, trumpet. Pull out the view. Pull out the view. So long have you been singing soca? Let's go. I like your mix and master. But if anybody could hold it down. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hold it. Hold it. It's all you. Dan, you know we just work saying dong, right? Pablo Wambay. What? Your favorite morning show hosts have found a new home. Introducing the TNT Morning Show on Next 99.1 FM with Richard Trumpet. Tim Tim. Wait, what? Mama, let's forget about me, huh? I'm not going to die now. The TNT Morning Show with Richard Trumpet, Tim Tim, and DJ Elon. Start your mornings with a bang. Is your child preparing for the 2021 SCA exam? First choice, here they come with the JJ and Friends SCA programs. With over 300 classroom video lessons delivered by highly qualified and experienced SCA teachers in mathematics, English language arts, creative writing, and comprehension. She was successful in SCA. She passed for her first choice. Let us support your child's Zoom classes with our SCA video lessons, which are aligned with the Ministry of Education's 2021 SCA Revised Assessment Framework. Additionally, we offer over 3,000 self-correcting practice exercises accompanied by email progress reports sent to parents. If you have a tablet already, ask about our two options. You can have these exclusive SCA apps which require no internet connection installed onto your tab or you can visit jjandfriendstt.com and sign up for SCA online lessons and practice exercises for less than $1 per day. Call 374-SCA2 or visit dbesttoys.com at MacQueenCoover for in-store specials. This episode of Farmers Food COVID was brought to you by what if we told you the quality of a vegetable is determined by factors the eye can't see? Harmful pesticides and bacteria can wreak havoc on your health. A blemish or bug bite in your lettuce? That's actually pretty harmless. That's why at GROW, we believe your vegetables should always be guaranteed safe. For all the things you can't see. The GSCP seal on GROW packaging means it was supplied by a local farmer under the Grown Safe Cultivation Program. GSCP farmers have their produce periodically lab tested for pesticide residue and microbial bacteria to ensure optimal nutrition and safe consumption. So next time you visit the grocery, don't just look for bug bites and blemishes. Look for Grow, the root of goodness. We have a mental health department in the division as well as in the Tobago Regional Health Authority. Um, since the start of COVID, we have been advertising the numbers endlessly so that if anyone feels overwhelmed by the COVID situation or any other situation, you can reach out to us for support. You can reach out to us um, for whatever help that you might need. And then, of course, I will add that in our People's National Movement Manifesto, we are focusing heavily on, in, on, on mental health and the wellness of our people here uh, on the island. And I give you the pledge that we will continue to work with all of you and to ensure that we have the training and the 
programs and the support facilities to treat with persons who are in situations like these. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we have come to the end of an exciting and excellent evening. And political leader, I would like to make a plug here that we have more of these sessions and forums probably once per month, twice per month, because we don't have enough time to respond to all the questions and to have the conversation. So I'm asking on behalf of all of us if we can continue. And time really flies when you are having fun. But I can assure you this is not the last that you would hear from these women Come January 25th, at least three of them would be your representatives, always accessible to you, and would be able to respond to your questions. We have Mrs. Webster Roy, our Tobago East MP, and of course, Mrs. Beckles Robinson, who is just over the seas, and we know that she would respond to, to us once we <laughs> call on her. And so I want to say thank you to our PNM women leaders. I want to say thank you to our live audience. Thanks to all tuned in and listening. And we are reminding you on January 25th, your only choice is the People's National Movement. And so we would close this evening with our theme song by Yolanda Job Summers. Good evening, everyone. It's a privilege to be here this evening with all of the beautiful esteemed ladies. My name is Yolanda, and as, as she would have said, I'm about to do the theme song. So if you guys know it, this is the end of the evening. We're having a good time, so don't be afraid to sing along with me, okay? <laughs> Even the lovely ladies on the stage, you guys can sing with me as well.
safely, ladies and gentlemen. The preceding program was a paid political broadcast.